Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, happy Saturday to you all. Hopefully you are enjoying your weekends. It has been a hot minute since I've said that word or said those sentences because OSC Saturdays is now back in video format for the immediate future. Hello, it is good to see your faces once again. Thank you for dealing with me over the kind of hiatus period. We moved two episodes, episode I think 34 and 35 were in text form. Uh, there should have been a 36 that went out last week, but I was on the move and didn't have access to like sit down and properly listen and digest to music. So we're kind of going to combine the two in a way. I mean, there's a solid eight song list this week anyway, so hopefully that makes up for the fact that we didn't have an OSC Saturday last week. Uh, apologies for that, but... We have a lineup for you today. We've got a lot of Street Woman Fighter stuff coming courtesy of Mion and Ugi. We've got Cho Yuri and Kon Jina on a Street Woman Fighter soundtrack, which is two artists that I didn't think would be on a dance competition show. Um, Wang Minghyung for his own show, which has continuously become more popular as we go on. Adora, who I've been meaning to check out for a long time. Mr. Schumann of EXO. A uh, little bit of a duet between uh, Song Yi Han and Yerin for Yerin's drama. And then finishing off with a little Four Stellar one time because Four Stellar are always a great time and they dropped the OST today. So, if you are new around here or have never been around to these OST Saturdays before, timeline below is going to be chapter based off of whatever song we are listening to. Uh, so if you want to skip ahead to a song of your choice, you are more than free to do so. If you are in it for the long haul like me, welcome aboard. Let's get started. DJ! Roll the intro. Okay, I have tried to get as many lyric videos as possible. Um, I've seen in like OSC Saturdays and in previous uh, like album listens that I've done that people want to find want me to find the lyric distribution videos and things like that. I went and tried to find as many as I could. The thing is, I don't know what the accuracy of these videos are going to be. So if they are incorrect, I can only apologize on behalf of the creator. These are not my original videos and things like that. I'm heavily relying on other other creators for this type of stuff, but. A little disclaimer out of the way. Let's start off with a little bit of Street Woman Fighter one time. Usually I have all of my notes on a notepad document on a second screen, but with my current setup, I don't have the luxury of that, so I have it on my phone. So you have to bear with me. Starting off with Mion and Oogie of Idol, the song How to Twerk for Street Woman Fighter 2. Now, Street Woman Fighter 2 and kind of music that's been on it, you know, it's very dance heavy, but let me tell you, this music coming out of this show has been kind of brilliant. Like, uh, uh, Maya and Kokona's uh, song from earlier in the show, bruh, that song has been living rent-free in my head ever since I listened to it, and I'm kind of hoping that one of the three Street Woman Fighter 2 songs that we're listening to today can kind of reach that. So, let's start off one time. Here we go. Right? Twerk it like it's in jello, my goodness. What's interesting is there's a very subtle hint of KDA in here. Let it drop. Interesting C major chord as a little interlude. That chorus is so interesting because it's very firm, but there's a hint of nursery rhyme to it. But 
this pre-course is so pretty. It's so flowy. You can kind of understand why this song could be selected for like a dance show just because the four, the main beats in the song are so firm and pronounced. Two, three, four. And it makes like moving along to it really easy because the song kind of paces itself out for you. Having the song be in such a clear, evident C major is so interesting too. Because it's a very firm and aggressive song, but it's in a key that's very friendly and cutesy. Or cutesy is a wrong word. It's almost like childlike. Especially that growing chord before the chorus. song is very interesting because it's not the kind of elements that go into this song do not scream a hard aggressive dance song and that's what's throwing me off the scent a little bit is you think of like i don't know maybe really fast raps throughout really just firm aggressive angry beats but that top line is so nursery rhyme-esque it's in a very simple chord like if you have a piano in front of you, you can play that entire melodic top line pretty much just using the white keys. Background instrumentals on the other hand, that's a little bit of a different story, but the melody and just like, especially that chorus just gives me so many nursery rhyme vibes. Like the melody is super simple, it's easy to remember, oddly cutesy, and just I feel like it doesn't scream dance song to me, just based off of that. But then you listen to the entire song, especially with the combination of the verse and the pre-course, now all of a sudden just gives me KDA vibes. And that may be the case because, you know, Mion's involved, and Mion, of course, was in the original KDA lineup, at least vocally as part of the KDA lineup uh, that Riot produced. Yeah, that's so interesting. I didn't think we'd get something that was this direction. I thought, actually, I didn't really know what to expect considering this lineup. I thought, you know, when I thought of like Streetman Fighter and Idol, I, my brain immediately went to Soyon and her rap, maybe like a Soyon and Oogie duet. But this was a surprisingly vocal heavy setup for a, whatchamacallit, for a dance song. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Keep her moving because we have lots of music. Okay, this is Ah Yes, My Lonely Liar. We are back onto this show, and it's this time it's Minyan singing on his own show, which is very exciting. Well, not his own show, but he's one of the main cast uh, members in it. So this is Alarm by Mr. Huang Minyan for the drama My Lonely Liar, which he is part of the cast for. Very exciting time indeed. <laughs> I like that the guitar part has a bit of a swing to it. Da -da 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 Also the very raw mix, vocals, acoustic guitar, that's it. Man, I really need to watch this show, don't I? It looks... I'm a sucker for like a rom-com or like a romance drama. And I've seen this show everywhere. Like, 
Oh, I didn't think they'd bring in more bottom men for this. I thought they'd just bring in generally more, but this is firm in the bottom end now. Okay. Hello, woodwind section. It's such a good swell. It's such a good swell. It's not like dramatic. It's a very almost heartwarming swell, and I love that. No, that song really is like the embodiment of what I know about this drama. I mean, admittedly, I don't really know a lot about this drama at all. I just see clips about it circulating on Twitter every time an episode drops. But it just, the sound of it, the sound of this song is so smooth. And even though it very much falls into that ballad category, it doesn't feel like an emotionally painful ballad to me. And that's what I like about it. Ballads for me, I've mentioned in prior episodes, especially with OSC Saturdays, that I find them to be a very cathartic experience to listen to, especially if I'm in like the kind of a moody place or I'm down in the dumps listening to a really sappy, emotional uh, ballad from like a drama or something. It makes me feel better. Like I like overwhelm myself with the negative sappy emotions and that is kind of like my way of flushing it out of my system is just overwhelm myself with even more of it but with this this kind of feels like a warm hug in a way it just feels comfortable it feels friendly it feels light yet it has all the aspects and traits that I want from a good ballad, which is that the instrumental's really smooth, the vocals are really smooth and a little bit dreamy, the song flows super nicely, like you can feel it growing and like waning in the background. It's... That's a solid, solid ballad. And again, this show has such a good track record when it comes to OSTs. It's like King the Land, My Lovely Liar, uh, there was a show earlier in the year that we just had pretty much every single OST from. Yeah, OSTs are great. Oh, good times. Okay. We're jumping back on with Street Woman Fighter 2. I believe we're going Yuri Choyuri first and then Konjina. Now, these two are artists that I do not associate with dance music. Like Konjina, I've only gotten to know very recently. And Yuri, I've known since Produce 48. Both of their voices are very smooth, just maybe a hint of airiness. With Yuri, there's a little bit more of like a huskiness to her tone. But they're very much really smooth vocalists. So to hear them in a dance setting is going to be so different for me. Like, sure, Yuri was part of Eyes One and they did some pretty dance-heavy stuff. Like, their title tracks were pretty much all, apart from Lobby and Rose, were pretty dance-heavy in terms of the style of the music. But still. That, you know, that's her on a, say, two and a half, three minute song, sharing line distribution among 11 under members. This is her on her own for three and a half minutes. So let's see what this is. This is Lost Dreams. 
Let me see UD4, Street Woman Fighter 2. I wonder if this is more BGM rather than actually dancing to it. Do let me know. Just context. I don't watch Street Moon Fighter 2, so I don't know the context of what these songs are being used for. Nice modern kick coming in. This is a very, this is a very UD coded song actually. smooth too. And the subtle two-part harmony there in the verse. This pre-chorus is so good for her voice because it accentuates that breathy high tone she has so well. Yeah, I'm not getting dance vibes from this, so I wonder if this is being used for like... Maybe there's like a reality thing in the based in the show somewhere. I think that atmospheric mix, I don't know if it was like growing or it was being more accentuated towards the end of the song, but I do quite like how open this song feels and that you can kind of hear Yuri's voice and the instrumental just kind of ring. It just keeps going, if that makes sense. And it's really nice to listen to, especially as someone who quite enjoys Yuri's vocals. Eyes One were pretty much the closest group to uh, I'm trying to think of like timeline of events in my K-pop like fandom career but Eyes One were one of my alt groups back in the day when they were still promoting and I mean to be fair I still love them to bits it's not like I stopped following them when they disbanded I mean followed literally every single act that's broken free from it but for me like eyes one and dc were like the one two alt groups and every single person in eyes one had their own charms yuri was her vocals i mean she was you know main vocal for a reason but it's that husky voice she has that is so cool there's not many female pop vocalists have a tone like she does and 
she knows how to use it and she has songs where it's accentuated so well and Lost Dreams for me might be one of the best songs of hers in terms of like properly accentuating that really unique husky vocal of hers. Her solo music, especially her more recent upbeat stuff, is really nice in terms of like vibes and like the energy. But if you really want to enjoy her vocals for what it is, you really want to look for her kind of softer stuff. This fits that bill so perfectly. Very nice. And then we get to stay on the show because we have Miss Konjina. Similar scenario with Yuri. <laughs> Again, kind of an open mix. Oh, hello, Core. I like that she's sitting in her lower range here too. Because I reckon the core she's gonna flip up. Oh. There it is. I like this instrumental switch. Oh, it almost makes it feel like it's done a cappella there. If you really pay attention to it, you can hear the instrumental, but... That head voice flip is so unfair. Hello, choir section. How many moving vocal parts do we have? Keep it coming, keep it coming. That is what I'm talking about. Okay. Again, it's not dance feely, unless it's like a kind of like romantic slow dance thing which for street woman fighter i don't reckon that's the case so i reckon this is probably another bgm piece but brada it's honestly essentially the exact same comments about this one as the, from uh yuri's it's a song that just does such a good job of accentuating the charms of her vocal I love that low range she has because there's like there's a certain very specific delivery that she has in her lower tone that only she has, or at least in terms of the soloists that I've come across, only she has. Her vocal color and her delivery in that low range, you listen to it, you immediately know it's her. And that's from someone who like, hasn't been following her for a very long time. I know 
like immediately off the rip without ha like even if you showed this to me without knowing who it was, I would know immediately this was a Kwon Jena song. But it's her ability to sit comfortably in that super charming low range and then just have the most graceful little head voice flips in the chorus. Oh. I mentioned it in... Oh. Someone commented about it in the hiatus video that I sent out before I went on the hiatus like three weeks ago. And also in the, like the first video uh, we made about Kwon Jina and her song. And ever since then, her music, especially like in terms of like OSTs, has popped up on my Spotify, like enhanced shuffles of playlists and stuff like that. She has not steered me wrong once in the music that I've listened to her, or my, that I've listened to from her. Admittedly, it's not a lot of music, and the sample size is not very big. But so far, for me, she has not had a single miss. That's hard to do, and I cannot say that for a lot of artists. There are some songs that are like, for a lot of artists, that I might not resonate with more than others, or just songs that really don't do it for me. With Kwonjina, even from the small sample size, I've playlisted every single song I've listened to her. That's kind of impressive. And again, further kind of proves the point that why did I take so long to get into her music? I don't know, but here we are, and it's a great time. All right, let's keep her moving. My eye is twitching. I don't know why it's doing that. I swear I'm okay. Okay, next up, Adora. I have been meaning to listen to Adora. Um, again, another soloist that I just never really kind of took the leap for. So this is Adora's Nth Universe, um, which I believe was the English title. Again, these, the English title might not be exactly correct because I'm reading off of a schedule that's like fan, uh, it's like from a forum, also called r slash kpop, but um, it's all like fan submitted and things like that. Uh, so this is Nth Universe by Adora from, uh, on the title it says My Reason to Die, so we're going to go with that. On this calendar... It was listed as what I decided to die for, but either way, it's a brand new drama, I believe. OST part one. So here are we a go. Don't worry, the frame rate will fix itself. <laughs> Why is this super J-pop coded? Like, this is giving me big Higedown vibes already. Whoa! Also, her voice is absolutely gorgeous, hello? Ooh, that had voice flip. Airy voice is so pretty. Clever filter. This pre chorus, too. Lots of syncopation, lots of modified chords. It reminds me so much of an official Higedanism song, like, I love, it's so good.
Nice post chorus. Wow. Okay. Um I tremendously enjoyed that. Scratch that. I ridiculously enjoyed that. What, what where did this one come from? Where did this one come from? Why is it so good? Where has this been all my life? And I need to listen to more Adora. Um she is absolutely just loaded with talent. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh. I kind of had my mind blown by that a little bit. Like, I was enjoying that so much. I don't really have that much to say. I forget if it was. Was it on an OSC Saturday in the past? Or was it some other release? I forget, but... I feel like I reference a lot to Higedan. Uh, when it comes to music like this. And, you know, that primarily comes down to them being my favorite act to come out of Japan in recent times. Like, Higedandism and their music and just is so fun to listen to. And especially as someone who primarily just listens to pop music and kind of like Eastern uh, pop music, you start to understand and see patterns as to how like songs are composed whether it's a standard chord sequence or chord structure chord grouping melodies cadences things like that so when a song like nth universe decides that it's just gonna throw in all the secret spices and herbs into the chords to make it sound really spicy and tasty and just throw the rhythm make it go crazy, throw in a whole bunch of syncopation. I love when artists do that. So immediately, this song gets plus points for that. But when you pair it with a voice like Adora's that is just so light and gentle and delicate, but also so pretty and so colorful, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna love it. I'm really just gonna love it. Oh my goodness. Note to self, Keep an eye out for Dora's music moving forward because pfft, that's spectacular. And honestly, could it make my top 10 OSTs this year? That's, it's a quite a long list at the moment. I mean, considering, you know, we've listened to a handful of OSTs every single week for 36 weeks now. Admittedly, we missed one week last week, but... It's a long list, but genuinely, Nth Universe is up there for me. Oh. Okay. This is Mr. Schumann of EXO uh, with the song Daisy for CEO Dol Mart. Um, I don't know if this is a like variety show or if this is like a reality show. I haven't even seen that many like posts about it. I just saw it on the schedule, and I was very interested in it, because I like Schumann's voice, and I like what he does. So, Daisy, let's just send it one time. I like this light rock upbeatness to it. I can't tell if that's a synth or pizzicato strings. I like to think it's strings, but...
I like the subtle background vocals that are being added to it. They're not constant. They get kind of sprinkled in here and there. And it's just subtle enough to just be like an extra little layer. It's not too prominent in the mix. It's very feel-good, and I like that. I like a good feel-good song, and I feel like this OSC Saturday could have used a little bit of a pick-me-up. It's been really smooth and really pretty and kind of sappy a little bit, so. I was gonna say, <laughs> that better not be over. Nice acapella re-entry for the final chorus. a good feel good song. Schumann's voice is very interesting to me in that he has that charming color that's very Schumann of him, but it's a color that you get regardless of what type of genre of music it is. And yeah, it's just oddly cutesy and oddly, it's very feel good. And I like a feel-good song. I feel like I mentioned earlier, but this kind of marathon needed a little bit of a pick-me-up, and that was, a, that was a very solid way. I am curious as to what the premise of the show is. Because, again, I don't know what the premise of the show is that would warrant a feel-good song like this, but it's a song that put a smile on my face and got me kind of rocking side to side like this, so I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased with it. Not really too much to say about it. Okay, Sony Han, who I've never listened to before, and Miss Yerin. I believe this is uh, for the Witch Store it Reopens, which Yerin is a part of the cast for, right? I think this is a show we've also talked about. Was it in text form or was it on episode 33 before we went on break? I don't actually remember, but I feel like we've touched on the show before. Of course, Miss Yedin had her comeback recently uh, under a new company now. Full project, very enjoyable. And um, yeah, the fact that we get more Yedin music. Look, I'm, I'm a buddy at heart. I love G Friend, so getting more G Friend music or G Friend related music, I'm never going to complain about. Um, I figured as much. Here we go. And I'm curious to hear what Song Han sounds like. Again, they play off of each other very nicely. They both have very soft voices. Nice. Love the way that chorus finishes. Get a little call and response into a two part harmony. Oh, 
Again, call and response into the two part. That bridge finale was exquisite. The way they take it, it just keeps going higher and higher and higher. No, oh, get me the, get me those background ads was further forward. That was kind of fire, though. That was kind of fire, though. It's um, it's kind of like going back on line with like Adora's uh, Nth Universe from earlier. It's it's kind of like an in between, actually, between ooh, in, in between Adora's and Schumann's. It's got the feel goodness to it, but it's vocally really pretty, and. The thing with a duet is there's a lot of different ways you can layer the two vocalists together and we got a lot of variation throughout the song. It's we got, you know, a little bit of one two or like A B A B. We got some call and response. We got just full on two part. We got one vocalist doing the main top line and the other doing the ad libs. Lots of overlap, lots of bouncing off of each other, and it's the vocal chemistry was on point. I would have liked to hear more of the background, like super high notes, because there were definitely a couple in that final chorus that got kind of pushed further back in the mix than I think it. Would, I I would have liked to hear them at. But that very nice. That's very nice. It's it's got. The range that I, I'm kind of referring to Yerin in this case because I don't know who Song Yian is, uh, nor do I know uh, their music. But with Yerin, there's like two or three versions of Yerin's vocals that you can get. And the kind of softer one in a song that's a little bit meant to be a bit more like charming and gentle rather than like the full power belt is kind of my ideal song style for Yen. I love her voice on a song like this, so I very much enjoyed it. And Song Yi Han pairs very nicely with her vocals. And last but not least for this week's roundup, we're jumping on with my boys from the crossover genre. It's the gentleman from Forstella. Oh, yes. Of course, they had a comeback very recently, and uh, because of it, I have no idea what to expect. For me, in my brain, Forstella had always been this group that brought the classical vocals for the masses. You know, they'd done all this dramatic music with a whole bunch of the, um, what? They did the dramatic music with the classical vocals, and they've made, like, popular pop songs in that kind of classical style, and that was how I always perceived for Stella. Until Cool dropped, because Cool was just straight up a pop song, written and sung by For Stella, and that blew my mind, because that kind of essentially threw all assumptions I had about that group out the window. And uh, admittedly, this is a drama, so I'm going to guess it's going to be more along the classical vocal dramaticness that For Stella are known for. But I can't say that with confidence anymore. And that's exciting. Because I don't know what I'm getting myself into. But this is for Stella. 
uh, with the song Chosen One for from the Sword of Aramun. So, here we go. It's a song in It's a song in 6 8 Tan ta da 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 Interesting. I mean, the dramaticness is there, isn't it? Duhun into Wurim into Mingyu into Hyungho. Nice. I'll give the composition team this. They really gave the dramatic like action scene soundtrack justice. You feel every single ounce of action and like dramaticism in this. It's like the various instruments you get in the background, really, you feel that kind of like tribal, like war chant, war anthem kind of vibe to it. It's one hell of a song, let me tell you. It's, it's got all, it's honestly, I mean, it is, you know, historical drama context, so that's where the kind of dramaticism, I think, comes into play a little bit better. But, man, this is very much, I almost want to say, like, film ost Yes, It's got that much dramatic power in it. And you really feel that like heart pounding like suspense and fear and action and 
like you feel the high stakes situation of whatever's going on on screen in that music whether it's like the big heavy bass drum that feels like a war drum or the end blown like wind instrument that's got a bit of a different resonance than like a classical instrument you feel the vocals of the four members and their you know classical and rock driven vocals that for stella are known for and you put it all together and it does make for a really good like heavy action ost doesn't it Ooh, ooh. and now like this this is the four stella that like i'm used to cool my goodness cool was a culture shock and a half but this is like ah we're back now we are back in my comfort zone i'm very pleased with that but i do believe that is yeah, that is the end of OST Marathon 4 this week. So, let's spin it over to the big screen one more time. I missed OST Saturday, man. These are always a great time. I say that every week, but OST Saturdays are always a great time. OSTs deserve a lot of love, and they just scratch an itch that normal, like, studio releases and album releases and MVs don't. It's always a great time. Uh, I do apologize if there's some stuff that had to get cut out because of copyright. Um... I can't do anything about that, so we'll deal with it as we go, but for now, that is it from me for this week's iteration of OSC Saturday. Thank you all for watching along with me. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. One last request from me today. Let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world, whether it be, you know, checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness to may brighten up someone else's day-to-day -day and know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy on the internet who waffles about music in his free time, know that I will always be a friend, an ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.